Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on JavaScript. I am Muhammad Iqbal Bhatt. Let us start. In the previous lecture, we covered basic introduction of JavaScript. One topic that was left in this introduction was to talk about JavaScript family. So let us know the JavaScript family. Currently in the market, there are a number of names that are linked with JavaScript. So one gets confused what are these different kinds of names that are linked with JavaScript and what is the relationship between them. So we can say that JavaScript has its own family. JavaScript in its pure form is not used. You cannot start writing websites, designing websites in JavaScript, but rather you make use of its family members. That is out your designing process. So there are two family members of JavaScript. One type are called libraries, JavaScript libraries, and another type the JavaScript frameworks. So let us know what are JavaScript libraries and what kind of JavaScript libraries are available in the market and what are frameworks and what kind of frameworks are available in the market. JavaScript libraries are simply files and these files contain functions written in JavaScript to perform some specific task on the web page. For example, if you want to display a chart on your web page, then you need to write a number of lines of code in JavaScript in order to achieve this functionality. But there are some pre-written functions available in the market that you can use in your projects, in your websites. So by making use of these powerful libraries, the programmer's workload is eased out. So these JavaScript libraries are especially written to ease the programmer's workload. For example, if you want to manipulate DOOM, so DOOM is document object model. It represents your web page. It represents your web page in an object oriented representation. So when you write a web page, there are different tags, items available in your page, and you can manipulate those tags. For example, you, if you have added a heading in your web page. You can manipulate that heading. You can manipulate its color. You can manipulate its position. You can manipulate different attributes of that. And that is called DOM and DOM manipulation. For DOM manipulation, we have a beautiful library called jQuery available in the market. You can make use of this jQuery library for DOM manipulation. Similarly, if you want to handle data in your application, if your website is dealing with a lot of data handling, then you can make use of d3.js library. d3 means data-driven documents, and it provides you a number of functionalities that you can use in your website. Similarly, in order to handle animations, you have anime.js, handle database like functionalities in your website you have cafe db and for handling maps in your website you can use algolia places user interface to create beautiful user interface you can use react js and to embed charts in your website chart.js library is available and finally to add different user interface components in your website you can use glimmer .js. Glimmer.js provides you a number of functions written in JavaScript that can handle your user interface. And their tagline is fast and lightweight user interface components for web. And these are ready made, available, and you can use them. So, in short, JavaScript libraries are a set of functions written in JavaScript that are ready to use and anyone can use them in your, uh, to design their websites.
another family member of javascript is javascript frameworks so let us know what are the javascript frameworks as opposed to libraries javascript frameworks provide you a complete skeleton to design and develop your applications they are not just a set of functions written in javascript that you can use in your website but instead they provide you a set of tools that you can use to design a complete website or web application there are a huge collection of javascript libraries that are pre-written and that you can use in your website designing. So frameworks are a step ahead of these JavaScript libraries and they fra these frameworks provide you a complete environment where you can design your websites. So the most popular frameworks available in the market are, for example, Angular. Angular.js, you might have heard Angular.js, and it is considered to be one of the top considerations while choosing a JavaScript framework. So, similarly, you have Ember.js, and other React Native is very famous, Aurela is very famous. So, these frameworks are available in the market, and you can use these frameworks and they ease out the process of designing a good responsive website or web application so this was a brief introduction about javascript libraries uh, the source for this information is a dataflare training website and the link is given below now let us move towards understanding the basic constructs available in the javascript so first one is data types what are the different kinds of data types available in javascript that you can use while writing javascript code there are two categories of data types available in javascript one category is called primitive data types and another non primitive or composite data types in primitive data types you have numbers strings boolean and a special or trivial type of category that is called null or undefined and in the non primitive or composite data types you have objects and arrays so let us understand these data types one by one using practical code snippets so as to understand them better so let us move to practical portion and understand these data types we are back in visual studio code and currently we are working in our javascript exercises file folder that we created in the last video so now in order to start we will create a folder inside this javascript exercises folder click on this folder icon with a plus sign at its top left corner and name the folder as data types now inside this data types folder we will create a file html file and name it index.html it creates an empty html file now in order to populate this html file with the basic html skeleton what we will use we will use html skeleton or boilerplate so type html the intelligence of visual studio code will populate with different options so we will use this third one html5 boilerplate so now we get a complete html skeleton or the rough sketch of an html page delete this extra stuff inside the body we will type a heading h1 data types in javascript and save it now in order to run this page or open it in a browser right click and then select the option open with live server the page will open in your default browser which in my case is google chrome so this is our page index.html running through the live server 
let us move back to our visual studio code now in order to write javascript code we have two options that we studied last time either we can embed the code within this index page html page that's called inline javascript embedding or we can write the code in a separate javascript file and then link it so for the sake of this exercise we will use inline javascript code so to use inline javascript code we place all the html code inside script tags so we start with script tag now we are ready to start writing our javascript code inside our html page so in order to test this html page we will simply uh, write a message on our browser using the document uh, write statement hello and welcome to java control s and if we see in our browser we got the message hello and welcome to javascript so this means our javascript is running so we are ready to start with our code before starting with data types we need to know certain things about the javascript first thing how to write comments in javascript what is a comment a comment is a statement or a set of statements in your program that are only to make your program readable and they are not executed uh, at the runtime so they are just for the purpose of uh, identifying or remembering different portions of your program and uh, mentioning what is the purpose of different uh, portions of your program so how to write a comment in javascript in javascript we can write two kinds of comments single line or multi-line in order to write a single line comment you precede it with two double slashes so by preceding any statement with two double slashes forward slashes it will comment out that statement so this is a single line comment in javascript it is same as we use in c plus plus or java and in order to write a multi-line comment you can precede the statement with slash star and end it with star slash this is a c type comment and inside this we can write this is my multi-line comment in javascript So this is the way how we can write comments in JavaScript. It is a good habit programming skill to use comments in your programs. Do comment different portions of your program, whether JavaScript or any other programming language. That will make it readable and understand, understandable to other persons if they look at your programming code. Next thing is, second is how to declare a variable. How to declare a variable inside JavaScript? A variable is a placeholder for our data. A memory is assigned to a variable. And if you want to use different kind of data inside your JavaScript, you need to define different kinds of variables for holding those data pieces. So, for example, if you want to use integer data type or a string type data type or a data, date type data type, for each kind of data, you need to declare different kinds of variables. To declare a variable inside your JavaScript, it is easy. Just start with the keyword var, followed by the name of the variable, and an optional initialization with equal to and value of the variable and each statement in javascript is ended with a semicolon so this is how we can declare a variable inside a javascript we start with var keyword it is a language keyword then the name of the variable or identifier and an optional initialization portion we can declare and initialize a variable or we can only declare a variable 
if you just want to declare a variable without initializing it then you can write it variable where name of variable and close the statement with semicolon so the first one declares a variable and then initializes it with some value the second one declares a variable and we can later on initialize this variable through another statement this is how to declare a variable now how then third thing that you need to know is how to name identifiers in javascript an identifier is a name of a variable or a function or a method and there are certain rules for naming these identifiers there are certain rules to name different kinds of identifiers in javascript first rule is that identifier names are case sensitive what does that mean if you declare a variable with some name for example if i declare a variable my first name and second where my first name these two variables are having same number of characters but in javascript they are treated differently because javascript considers them case sensitive in the first case we are having a capital f and in the second case we are having a small f so these two are different identifiers they are not same second rule is we can start an identifier name with an alphabet or an underscore or a dollar sign so in order to start an identifier name you can either use any alphabet a to z capital or small or an underscore or a dollar sign no other symbol or digits are allowed in uh, identifying an identifier so for example if i declare a variable with the name dollar my bar so this is a valid identifier but if i declare it at where and my where this is not valid why it starts with and 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 is not allowed to start an identifier name same way if i declare the variable where one to one my where this is also an invalid identifier because it starts with a digit and digits are not allowed at the beginning of an identifier name so you can use numbers in between after the first character you can use numbers or these three two symbols underscore and dollar sign no other symbols are allowed for example where my first name it is a value identify because it starts with an alphabet and then it does not have any symbol other than dollar and underscore so though it is having a digit and digits are allowed after the first character we can use digits so you must remember how to write an identifier how to declare an identifier which identifiers are valid and which identifiers are not valid for example tell me whether this is a valid identifier or not no why 
because it starts with a digit and digit is not allowed at the beginning of an identifier again where is this a valid identifier no why because the identifier is having a symbol and which is not allowed only two symbols are allowed underscore and dollar sign so we can write it as 105 this is a valid identifier because we have put an underscore in a state of this and so remember these rules third rule is that the identifier we must not match with a reserved keyword there are some reserved key reserved keywords in javascript for example this bear is a reserved keyword for while these are the reserved keywords and we cannot use these reserved keywords as identifiers for example if i name my variable as where for this is an invalid identifier why because this for matches with the keyword for which is a language reserved keyword and we cannot use it so these are some rules for identifiers how to declare identifiers variables how to name these identifiers and you must keep in mind these rules now we will come to our main topic different kinds of data types in JavaScript. As already told that there are two categories of data types. One category is called primitive data types and another category is called non-primitive or composite data. What are primitive data types? Primitive data types are the data types and that are included with the language. These are the basic data types that are available with us. And there are actually three types of primitive data types available with us. First, numbers or integers. Second category is strings. And the third one is Boolean. Numbers, integer, float, these are included in numbers. So let us start with strings because they are easy to handle we will start with strings string data types in javascript so what is a string a string is a set of characters a set of characters including digits symbols and white spaces so a string is a set of characters including digits so string is a special kind of data type in javascript that we can use and in javascript it is considered to be a global object or a constructor for strings or sequence of characters and we can use it to store all kind of textual data in javascript so strings are used to store all kind of textual data in javascript one thing to remember that uh, as in c language we are having a char or c plus plus in javascript there is no separate Data type for a single character. 
So if you want to use a single character, then you must use a string data type as well. So how to declare a string? We can make use of where keyword followed by name of the string. My first string. And if we want to initialize this with some value, then equal to initialization. And terminate the statement with semicolon. So this is a simple declaration of a string inside JavaScript. First, name of the variable or identifier or string and then the initialization here you need to note certain things first since javascript is a untyped or weakly typed so what do you mean by untyped or weakly typed that we have already discussed because in C or C++ or in Java, we explicitly need to mention the type of a variable. For example, in C, if we want to declare a character, then we can use char, name of the variable, and then initialize it. So we explicitly declare the type of the data. But since JavaScript is a weekly type language, we are not mentioning any kind of any such information while declaring a string so for example in java if you want to declare a string you can use string object and the name of the string so you are explicitly giving the type of data that this variable is going to hold but in javascript we are not mentioning that information it is depending upon the kind of data that you are storing inside this variable it is data will be set so we are storing a string so this will be of string type so that is what we call as weekly type second java is a dynamic language and by dynamic we mean that we can change certain uh, features of the language at runtime in java if you declare a variable with data type string, there, there is no way to change this data type at the runtime. But in JavaScript, if I have declared this variable as of string type, then later on in my code, if I put some other information inside this, my first string equal to one, two, three. So this is an integer data. So already I have declared it as string type. But later on in the code, I have put some integer type information inside this variable. So now the data type of this variable is shifted to integer. That is what we mean by dynamic language. So with respect to this data type, there are two important concepts. One, it is an untyped or weakly typed language. Second, it is a dynamic language. We can declare a variable without mentioning its data type and once a variable is declared, then we can change its type based on the information that we stored inside this variable. Now, one more thing you need to note is that in order to assign a string to this variable, string strings are put inside these double quotes. But you can also use single quote. For example, where my second string equal to hello here i have used single quotes so both are allowed you can use single quote or you can use double quotes so if i declare a variable where my third where string equal to Here, I am storing a numeric information inside this string variable, but since I am enclosing that numeric information within these quotes, so it is data type will be of string type. So anything that is wrapped between these quotes 
is considered a string inside JavaScript. There is one more way to prepare a string using global string object. There is a string object that we can use to declare a string. For example, where my global string equal to. Then we can make use of this new keyword, new creates a new instance of an object and the name of the string class. And the string is put inside this these braces, the data that we want to put. So this will create a string. This will again create a string. Now, in order to display the information stored inside this string, there are different ways. So one simple way is if you want to put this string information in an HTML page, you can use document dot write. Document dot write is a function that can be used to write. This statement document dot write is to is used to write any statement or a string or a, uh, other information uh, inside your index HTML page. So, for example, if we want to type this message, my first string in our HTML page, we can write it here. My first name of the variable. We will save it and we will switch to our browser. So it is written. Hello, how are you? Same way you can display the result of document dot write my second string. We will save it and then switch to our browser. So it is written here. Hello. Now, if you want to put a line break between these two strings, then how can we do that? So for that, you can concatenate line break between this. So what I am doing that this plus when used with the strings is used as a concatenation operator. It concatenates those two strings. The left string is the value inside this my first string variable, and it concatenates concatenates it with this string break. And break is a tag, and this tag will be outputted it will be output here and once it will go to the browser the browser will treat it as a break tag and we will get a line break so if we save it so here we get a line break so this was regarding how to write uh, write the output of a variable in your document html document next what if you want to output a double quote or a single quote inside your string? For example, I have a variable, my new string, equal to e set. What is Now there is a problem. If I want to put these double quotes inside this string, so it is not treating it well. It is considering that we are closing this first double quote at this place and then it is throwing an error and after that it expects a semicolon. So how to do, do that? Uh, for that we can make use of escape characters. We can escape a character with the help of a backslash. So if we want to output this double double code here, then we can use a backslash again backslash. Now it is okay. So here, if you want to escape certain characters that cannot be directly put inside in uh, inside a string, then you can make use of these escape characters. There are different kinds of escape characters. One is for double quotes. So 
backslash double quotes similar way if you want to use single quote you can use backslash single quote similarly if you want to put a new line uh, anywhere in the string if you want to put a new line you can make use of backslash n and it's for new line similarly if you want to put a tab to put a tab in the string and finally if you want to put a backspace backslash b to put a backspace in the string so these are called escape sequences there are different escape sequences that we will learn with the passage of code time so for the sake of this uh, tutorial i am mentioning only few of them so this is how you can make use of these different kinds of escape sequences inside your job now next how to put multi-line text in a string so for example if i want to declare a variable minus welcome to the basic course on javascript so this is a message that i want to put inside this my message variable but it is showing error since i have put a break at the end of this first string it is expecting a double quote and uh, statement terminator semicolon so how can we put that so for that there are two ways to write multi-line strings one is to make use of this plus operator so you can use plus operator to concatenate different strings so i will terminate the string and i will put a plus i will put this on second line again if i want to put some another string another line so i can put it here and finally terminate it so in order to put multi-line uh, text inside a variable you can make use of this plus operator this is a concatenation operator so you will terminate the first string and then type plus and on the next line you will put another string part and terminate it with a plus and so on one more way is to make use of we can use my message to we can use a backslash we can make use of this backslash but for backslash to work you don't need to terminate this string So now I have put a multi-line text. So this backslash, and remember that there should be no space after this backslash. So remember, remember not to put any space after backslash. So this is how you can write a multi-line text. Now let us discuss some properties of strings there are string properties that you can use inside your javascript code that are associated with these strings first property is length property if you want to know the length number of characters inside your string how can you print that or uh, know that so for example, I want to know the number of characters inside my this message string. 
so you can use my sage dot after dot the property name the length so this will give you the length that is the number of characters i will put it again number of characters in the string including white spaces so if we want to display the number of characters in the string so we can write it document dot write And now see the output 53. We can format it a bit. We'll put a break when this is length of string is. Control S and move to your browser. Length of string is 53. This means there are 53 characters in this string. Starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. So this is the first property that you can use. Next property is how to change the string to upper or lower case so if you want to content, change the contents of a string to lower or upper case then you can make use of to upper case and to lower case uh, property so for example i can my upper case message to my message dot to uppercase so now this will change the entire content is inside this my message string to uppercase and then assign it to this new variable now we can output it dot write my upper case message. So let us see this result. Oh, I forgot to mention these two braces because it is a function. Similarly, if you want to convert it to lowercase, you can copy this string my lowercase message and then you have to change it to two. Then we can display it my lowercase message. Let us see the output. So it has converted the whole contents into lowercase. So this was how to convert it to upper and lowercase. Now how to Character inside. Okay. If you want to know a particular character inside your string, for example, if I want to know what is the fifth character inside the string, so for that you can make use of pair add function. So you can use this function to know what the uh, specified character. For example, I can say my message dot pair at fifth position remember the index starts from zero that is 
the first character will be at zeroth position first second third fourth and fifth so i should get m m is the fifth character in this message let us see the result sorry i forgot to write document dot write So here it is showing M. Let us format it with a break. The character at fifth position is. So here is the result. The character at fifth position is M. Similarly, you can also get the code of a particular position. What is the character code? Since you know that the strings or characters are in uh, stored using different uh, coding schemes. We have ASCII, we have Unicode. ASCII is an 8 bit character scheme where we can store 255 characters at maximum. And Unicode is a universal coding where that is 16 bit where we can uh, store around 6553, 65,000 characters. So JavaScript is using Unicode character scheme. So if you want to know the Unicode, uh, uh, code of a particular character so you can use their code at for example if i want to write the code of this fifth position character the code of character at fifth position is their code at our browser it is saying that the code of the character at fifth position that is m the code is 109 so you can also get the character code same way if you want to know the index for example we know that the index of m is 5 but if you are given m then and you want to know what is the index of this what is the position of this m character inside the string so for that you can use index of also remember that it returns the index of first of all There may be more occurrences of the same character, it will return the index of first occurrence. So, for example, you can copy this. The index of M in string is here we have to write. Of M. So you want to know the index of M. So the terminator is on the next line. Control this and then the index of M in string is 5, and we know that it is a fifth position. Few more functions. First is how to concatenate two strings. So it is easy, we can make use of this plus operator that is a concatenation operator. Concatenate 
two strings. For example, if we have our string one equal to hello and we have string two equal to world. These are two strings and if I want to concatenate these two strings into a third string, where full string equal to string one plus string two. This plus operator is used as a concatenation operator and it will concatenate these two strings and put the result inside this full string. So we can output this result in that right. First we will output a break and then full string. Let us see the output. So here is the result hello world. So this is how you can concatenate a string. Another way is how to append. How to append more strings to an already existing string. For example, if I am having a string, string one with hello, and I want to append this world after this hello to this string one. So what I can use, I can make use of concatenate operator uh, uh, function. So, for example, string one dot concat and the string that I want to concatenate. Word. What this will do? This will append these characters after this string content. So now I can output it. string one. Let us see the output. String one oh, sorry I need to put it back to the string one. String one equal to string one dot concatenate and then this hello world. So this is how you can make use of concatenation uh, in the string. Similarly, one last function that we will study here. How to print spaces. If you receive some data from the users and it is possible that users may add some spaces at the beginning or at the end of the string. So before processing that data, you need to trim that string by removing those extra spaces. For example, if I am having this string, hello, so this is the string and it is having some unwanted spaces at the beginning as well as at the end. So you need to trim these spaces. You want to remove these spaces. For that, you can make use of trim uh, function. What trim does? It removes these extra spaces at the beginning and at the end. So we can say my space string equal to my space string dot trim. So it will remove the extra spaces from beginning and end, and then we can output that result. So this was all about the strings. Hope you covered the basic concepts regarding these strings, how to use them. So let us now move to numbers integers.